All right, y'all. We back with another one, YouTube. If y'all reading the title, man, y'all probably already know. I've been hitting at this for a while. Um, been telling y'all I was gonna pick up something new, or well, new to me at least, old to y'all, because I know how y'all like to talk down, man. So we're gonna get right into it nonetheless. No need to hold y'all up. I know y'all came over here to watch something, so here you go. Yep, another Glock, man. Nothing special, nothing new. Just a good old flashy, good old fashioned Glock, man. That's what we got here today. So y'all gonna be unboxing this with me. I'm gonna check this out. If y'all, like I said, if y'all already watching, then y'all probably already know what it is, man. So we gonna get right into it. Y'all already know how Glocks come, man. Nothing special, as y'all can see. Got the nice little padding up top at the bottom. Got your um your three mags, of course. Got your little mag loader right there. And of course, the gun itself. So, I'll get right into it. That's the one thing I can say, though. At least they always send you three mags with the Glocks, man. Now, I don't know about other companies. I know a lot of companies have been kind of stingy lately. But yeah, this is the third mag that comes with it. And um, I just got this from the FFL, so it's empty. So no need to check anything. As y'all can see, the mags are empty. And yes, we have it here, man. As y'all can see, take a good look at that. This is not a Glock 19. This is not a Glock 23. Got the Glock 32 Gen 4 357 SIG. As y'all see, it got that old dusty look finish to it, man. The Gen 4s. Me personally, I like it, though. I never had a Gen 4. This is my first Gen 4 cop. Um, I've only had Gen 5 Glocks, even though the 19X does have a lot of, um, and I'm not flagging the camera, y'all, even though the 19X has a lot of characteristics of the Gen 4s, but this is a true Gen 4 right here, and yeah, man, so, as y'all can see, it's pretty much the same old Glock, nothing special, man, so y'all can talk trash in the comments if y'all want, but yeah, we are unloaded, y'all wanna see, for all my safety police out there, there's nothing in there, you two, we empty, as you can see. I got all three mags in me right here. I just picked this up from the FFL. I haven't even got a chance to load the mags up. So as y'all can see, we are empty. But yeah, man, just typical factory Glock packaging. Nothing special here, man. Just wanted to show you a quick unboxing. Y'all probably done seen a million videos of these on the internet somewhere, on YouTube, with people unboxing. I know I'm late to the party, and most of y'all probably gonna wonder why. Why did I get a 357 Glock? Um, out of all the other options that are out there. Now, if y'all know me, then y'all know I like rare calibers and not even necessarily rare. Um, I would consider this one a little bit more rare than like, you know, typical like 10 millimeter because I know just a few years ago that was starting to come up on the rise. But as you can see, 10 mil is starting to get more on the rise now. It's more readily available. Whereas though two or three years ago, I mean, at least I couldn't find a lot of ammo for um, when I was searching to buy one. And that's kind of one of the things that kept me away from it. But if you want to talk about ammo being hard to find, this is definitely not necessarily hard to find. You can find it, but it's pricey. That's what a lot of people would tell you about 357 SIG. And I've been itching at it for a while. Um, I'm going to be honest, you're probably going to grind me up in the comments, man. But when I first heard about the Glock uh, 357, the, the Glock 32 or, you know, just 357 in general, um, my homie had the um, Glock 33. And he told me he bought it, and I and I told him I wasn't aware of that model. Now, I know that's the subcompact 357 SIG, but at the time, I didn't know. So, I thought it was a 357 Magnum. So, I'm like, oh, you got a Glock chambered in 357 Magnum, because I didn't know anything about 357 SIG. So, you know, um, I got corrected at a gun show. Nonetheless, um, I went, and I seen the Glock 33, and I'm like, oh, look, this one my homie got, you know, it's chambered in 357 Magnum. But the dude like, nah, homie, this is chambered in 357 SIG. So yeah, man, I figured that's just a little funny story I shared with y'all on how I figured out what this actually was. So I did some digging, I did some research because, you know, anytime I get corrected or something that I find out new, I like to do my research on it so that I can educate myself, especially with something that, you know, is a hobby for me. You know, I love, I love firearms, you know, I'm into it. I like guns. So, you know, just something that I really wanted to learn about. So obviously y'all should know 357 SIGs is a, is a um, bottleneck down uh, 40 and then it has the... Um, projectile with nine millimeter. So it does give it a little bit more, well, not a little bit more. From everything I've heard, it has a lot more oomph than a 40 and 357 SIG. Now, some will argue that. I'm not here to argue with y'all, man. I don't test ballistics. I don't do none of that. But from the videos I have seen, this thing definitely packs a punch. 
and um, it's nothing to play with basically. Um, so if y'all know 40, then y'all should definitely be familiar with 357 SIG. If you're not, well then welcome to it. You learn something new today. Cause for me, a few years back, it was something new for me too. And ever since then, I've been itching at 357 SIG, man. I've been really wanting to get my hands on a Glock chamber than 357 SIG or anything for that matter. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Glock is the first one, not the first one, but the only one to still produce like a readily available handgun chambered in 357 SIG, which is the Glock 32, which is basically a Glock 19, as y'all can see. And then you got the Glock 31, which is basically a full size um, 357 SIG. And then the Glock 33, which is um, the subcompact, like the Glock 27 or the Glock 26, just chambered. And, you know, if you had any of those guns, then you know the size of it, just chambered in the same caliber, the 357 SIG. So, man, if Y'all got a dollar for every time I say that in this video, man. Y'all probably gonna be rich by the end of this video because I don't know how many times I already said it. But um, yeah, man. So basically I wanted something new, um, old but new, like I said, man. This is a Gen 4, but I just wanted something that, you know, was a little bit different, you know, not your everyday, something you're gonna see every day. You know, it's not that it's super rare. I mean, in my, in my opinion, it's rare. I know for some people, you get people that'll argue with you in the comments, man. They'll tell you that it's rare, that you'll get some people, my bad for the background, man. My fault, y'all. I had to cut that off, man. I ain't trying to get no copyright strike from YouTube, man. That was my, uh, somebody passing by with loud music and stuff. So I'm like, I was saying, y'all, yeah, basically I wanted something different, you know, even though it's old, like I said, who cares about that, right? I can care less about that, but, um, I just wanted something that you don't see every day. You know, everybody got a nine millimeter, you know, everybody got a 40. You know, which don't get me wrong, I love 9 mil. I got plenty of stuff chambered in 9 mil, you know, and at the end of the day, I, I like it. You know, I love 9 mil. Um, I had I had a 40 before. Um, not really, I don't know, I'm not too crazy about 40 because basically a 10 millimeter is the original 40, just the full size. 40 is just a short 10 millimeter for me. So, yeah, I do like 40. Would I get something else chambered in 40 one day again? Maybe, but as of right now, I'm not really leaning towards that because that's the next thing I wanted to get into. You can actually um, get the conversion barrel to make this a 40. That's all you gotta swap out. Or you can even make it shoot nine and even 22. Um, I think you would have to change the slide out for the 22. But as far as the nine and the 40, you could literally swap the barrels and you'll be good to go. So that's something I also learned recently, like literally like just within the past month, I've learned that um, before I got the gun. And um, that's pretty cool because if I wanna shoot 40 out of it, all I gotta do is get the barrel and then I can change out. So, you know, when when the ammo basically, you know, starts fluctuating, you know, cause sometimes you can find it, sometimes you can't. So when it starts to get a little bit tight, then you can just switch over to 40 and then boom, you got a Glock 23. So I do like that, man. I think this is a really nice gun. I mean, it's a Glock, you know I mean? If you got Glocks, then you already know. You, like they say, if you shot one, you shot all, even though that's not necessarily true because they're all chambered in different calibers, obviously. And Glock is probably one of the main companies that have like a wide variety of different calibers, you know, available. And that's the one thing I will say that you're not gonna find anybody else that has this chamber in 357 SIG, um, at least not readily available. You'll probably have to get like a conversion barrel or something like that. So yeah, but like I said, man, um, just look up the ballistics test. You don't gotta believe me. There's plenty out there, people testing it out. And um, they'll tell you, man, 357 is, is the way to go. So. Will this be my new EDC? Only time will tell. I have not shot it yet. I picked it up at my FFL. I wanted to shoot it because my FFL is also one of the main places I go to to shoot. Um, but I didn't have any ammo with me. I came straight from work and went straight over there. So I didn't have nothing ready. So I figured I'd just come back. Um, I got a few boxes of ammo for it. Nothing crazy, man. But, um, you know, it's just enough for me to just kind of take it and just kind of just do a quick little test, a function test, make sure it's working and everything like that. But um, I'm gonna get more ammo eventually. I found a few places that have some pretty good prices on it. So if you're not willing to spend that coin, you know, to spend a little more for this caliber, then you're probably not gonna like it. It might not be for you. I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's not up to me to promote anything towards you. That's not what we do on this channel. I'm just giving y'all my personal opinion on this and letting y'all know why I like it and why I went and bought it. Cause I could have bought anything else for, for um, what I got this for. I could have literally got pretty much any other newer nine millimeter out there. There's plenty of stuff that's newer with, you know, optic ready stuff like that. I mean, I got newer stuff too, but for me, that's not, that doesn't always appeal to me. You know, I like old stuff. Like I said, I never had a gem four. 
Um, I shot Gen 4s before I shot Gen 3s, but I've never actually owned one. So for me, this is just a whole new thing. So I don't mind that, you know, for me, it's a whole new experience and a whole new caliber. I've never shot 357 SIG. So like I said, as far as it being my EDC, only time will tell. But I mean, like I said, man, you just you just can't go wrong with a Glock, man. Stock, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Now, I have heard people saying that the Gen 5 triggers are better than the Gen 4. I don't really notice a whole lot of difference in this. I mean, but I think the break on it is actually not bad. Um, as y'all can see right there, I already got, got it wrecked. So I will show y'all the trigger pull on it. You almost hit like an immediate wall. Like it's almost super clean. Like that's your wall right there. Barely any take up. And then, you know, you got that slight little bit of over travel, but I mean, I don't think it's bad. If you shot a Gen 5, then you should probably already know what that is because these triggers are very similar. Your wall. Nice tactile reset. And then there you go. So yeah, you know, the break is a little, the break is, is, is very like immediate. And then like I said, you have a slight bit of over travel, which people refer to as the sponginess. Don't really care. I mean, the triggers work for me. Um, I've only changed the trigger on my 19X, but every other Glock that I've had, I've never changed the trigger on it. Don't plan on doing that with this. And then yes, you do have your typical U sights, no tritiums or any nice sights like that. You know, Gen 4 is gonna come with the same type of sights that the Gen 5s come with. Nothing, like I said, nothing out of the ordinary. I wouldn't really worry too much about that because they work for me. Um, you know, a lot of you guys will argue back and forth that the Glock plastic sights are trash. I mean, I've never had them fly off. I've never had them malfunction in that type of way. Um, they work fine. I can line up the sights just right with them. So for me, like I said, for some people, this might not be all that because I know a lot of people like to hate on Glocks, man. I'm not a Glock representative. I'm not paid by Glock to advertise. They don't need that. They don't even need me doing anything like that. But uh, I'm just wanting to tell you that based off experience, I just, I really like Glocks. You know, I like other handguns, but for me, it just works, you know? And at the end of the day, you don't really have to do anything to this out of the box. You're getting a solid gun and you know, Glock's reliability is, you know, always been on the line, you know, it's always there. So, you know, you really don't have much to worry about. Um, I got a light for it. I'm gonna throw on here. I'm gonna throw the old light on here. Got one sitting around. I'm gonna slap that on here. Um, I got a little um, magwell for it. A few little extra goodies I'm gonna throw on here. Nothing major at all. Like relatively inexpensive, nothing crazy. And I also have a holster for it. Um, once again, I'm not flagging y'all. Pointing that way. And we are empty. Um, I have a holster for it too. So this gun's ready to go as an EDC. But like I said, I haven't took it to the range yet. So I will be testing this out. So if you guys are interested, you know, stay tuned because I will be coming at y'all soon with the range review. Once I get some time to get to the range, hopefully this week. If not, then, you know, maybe in the coming weeks, you know, I get some free time. I'll definitely go shoot a couple rounds through it, see if it passes the function test, which I'm like 99% sure that it's going to pass. I don't think I'm going to have any issues with it. So, um, yeah, once that happens, then, like I said, only time will tell as far as it's being in my ADC rotation. So, yeah, man, I don't want to make this video any longer, y'all. If there's anything else you want to know about this gun, which you probably already know, just hit me up in the comments, man. Y'all already know I respond to everyone down to earth. I try to always show love back. So I appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. And I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. All right, y'all be safe out there.